right now so that we can start with the program. Is everyone? Is everyone there? Can you indicate? So since since you have muted your so you have muted your your mics, I think it is about time that we should start. Good afternoon to all. We've been requesting the executive mayor to do the, uh, the, the welcoming address. Unfortunately, his programs are overlapping. Since the programs are overlapping, let us immediately go into contextualizing the process. And I want just to do the honors of the, of the protocol. If there are members of parliament, the representatives of Salga, like your district and local leadership, and well as district and local councillors that are on the platform, the Office of the Statistician General, someone that they've been walking this path with us for the past week and a half, the, uh, the representative from the FFC also, those that have walked with us this part, we need to, whilst I'm speaking, apologize for the uh, Commission on Gender Equality, they couldn't make it as well as the Auditor the General Office because we are being honored that the Deputy Auditor General, she was the one that they've been making input into our event. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the constitutional mandate of Parliament requires, let me take a step back, I will take a step back after I've spoken and I want to apologize. Can I use this opportunity? to just have a few moments of silent prayer or meditation. Thank you very much. Let me start by welcoming all of you to this session. It is our third session. It is our fourth region because we decided deliberately to continue with our program in the Northern Cape, since we had one event last year in the Western Cape, and we decided to take it also the, in the form of addressing districts, because it's actually giving us a much better scope and a much better opportunity to spread the consultation process. Our constitutional mandate as Parliament requires that we must provide meaningful opportunities for public involvement in its legislative and other processes. This thus means that Parliament is placed at the core of public discourse through the creation of platforms of engagement with the public and private sectors, particularly the vulnerable and the marginalized. Gender inequality is one of the key drivers of the debate for skewed access to health care between men and women. Furthermore, equality in other sectors is experienced by women, does not always arise naturally. It is for this reason why gender transformation interventions must be, designed, must be designed in a manner that brings together all the sectors of society in order to ensure continued progress in the realization of women's rights. We must use every avenue possible to inculcate a new culture of equality and non-sexism in our communities. In 1994, women in South Africa were elated with the adoption of the Women's Charter for Effective Equality Equally so, in 1996, gender activists were optimistic that the adoption of the equality clauses in the Constitution had laid a foundation for the realization of women's rights. Beyond the euphoria of 1994, concerns have mounted at the widening gap between the country's lofty constitutional commitments and policy affirmations around gender, Equality on the one hand, women continue to bear the brunt of inequality trapped by poverty, economic exclusion, violence, and femicide. The disjuncture between public endorsement of gender equality and actual institutional practice is, however, particularly poignant in South Africa, in part many, because many of the indicators of policy failure are so stark. Hence, as a people centered parliament, we took a resolution at the 2019 Women's Parliament to embark on a 25-year review of the entire women's rights regime in order to take stock of the process progress made since uh, 1994 
since the adoption of the 1994 Women's Charter for Effective Equality. Through this exercise, we will also assess the systemic weaknesses that continue to impede the realization of gender equality in South Africa. I think we all agree that there is lack of coherent policies. We've been hearing it up and down for many people. There is no coherent programs. Apparently, everyone is working in his own silo. We need to bring in systems, planning, budgeting, monitoring, and evaluation in South Africa. Hence, the majority of objectives stipulated in the Women's Charter seems to be difficult to be achieved. We therefore afford you the opportunity to directly engage us as your public representatives as well as government agency in order to find lasting solutions for qualitative gender transformation and to translate the character from the charter from theory into reality. Let our solutions be informed by our local realities and dynamics. All know that women and children in this region have suffered the most with the closing of the rail manufacturing yard, which led to high prevalence also of the fetal alcohol syndrome because of business and poverty. So let us use this opportunity to arm us as your representative with strategies, information, and tactics to make the charter a reality. So with that few words, we want to welcome you, and I want to thank you for the opportunity. We will immediately continue, and in the program, if you look at it, it should have been the gender commission, but since they haven't sent the representatives, we will request now Ntate Maluleke to uh, the statistician general to come in and to assist us to continue with the program. Ntate Maluleke, as you wish, it's over to you. Madam Deputy Chair, may I be assisted by uh loading the slides from that side but otherwise we have neil from my office who will also assist in loading them let, yeah let me let me uh, just say that yes the slides will be possibly loaded but it will not be on the screen because it's impacting on the broadcast on the tv screen so i see but i think it has been in a way uh, addressed so no, you may continue it's in order, uh, 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 Deputy Chairperson, and again, let me send my greetings to MPs and uh, indicate that we always appreciate, as let's say, to be uh, asked to join uh, this gathering and to take further discussions in this regard. Having said so, Chairperson, let me indicate that uh, 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 everywhere you will be going, we'll be following you around, as let's say, and today we are focusing on Pixley Gassem, if I uh, would remember well. The population of the Republic of South Africa still stands at uh, 58.78 million persons, of which when we unpack further, we do see that uh, uh, the Northern Cape accounts for 2.2% of the population. That is about 1.3 uh, million persons. In Pixley Gassem, we have about uh, 205,000 persons to be exact. It's 205,861 as a, a, of 2020 projected. Going further, we are looking at male and female in, uh, in Pixley Gassem. 52% 52 52 in Pixley Gassem remain, no, 50% uh, uh, remain uh, um, male while 50% is female with a slight movement in percentage of, of uh, 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 females. That is, females occupy at, at 52 point, uh, I mean, 50.2%. So it, it's, it's, it's a fair balance closer to 50-50. Now, let us look, Madam, in terms of uh, households that uh, have the main source of water as piped water. <laughs> Uh, connection and this is as of 2016. About 94.4% uh, of the population of Pixley had uh, 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 water connections coming from pipe uh, supply as a main source. And indeed, those who had access to flush or chemical toilets were 80.4%. And furthermore, 90.2% of the households are connected to electricity as the main source of power. 
Now let us look at the uh, Pixel Liga uh, uh, sitting at, at about uh, uh, 40 percent of the no my apologies 40 is is uh, not Pixel Liga Northern Cape is sitting uh, uh, below the uh, lower bound poverty line. And having said so, I want to remind MPs again in relation to what is the amount that we are talking about when we talk about the uh, uh, poverty lines, these poverty lines. These poverty lines are sitting at about 1,200 for the upper bound. That is, these people can choose whether they can afford the minimum desired lifestyle. Whereas uh, about 781 is the lower bound poverty line. And this is what the National uh, 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 Development Plan tracks throughout. And these, these are people who are sitting and say, can we make a, dif a, dif a decision whether to buy food or other important uh, non-food items? And they have to decide whether they should buy food or uh, pay uh, for a taxi to go to the nearest town to uh, 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 buy a newspaper because they want to look for an advertisement or they have to go and visit a relative. And again, about 560 of those are in what we call the poverty line. Uh, this is, these are national figures. Having spoken now of the national figures, the lower bound poverty line for Pixley Gassem, for the Northern Cape, my apologies, uh, we don't unpack poverty lower than uh, a provincial level because the estimates might become very difficult for us. So we, we only unpack only up to a provincial level. But specifically, the lower bound poverty line for the Northern Cape is the same as the national figure that we give as a country. It's sitting closer to uh, 40 percent, with a slight emphasis to 40.7 percent. Now, let us move further and look at uh, the sex ratio of female. Uh, I mean, of households that are uh, uh, are taking a share of poverty in the Northern Cape. The majority of those are female, sitting at 43 percent, while 39 percent are male. And particularly, the more people having gone to school. People with no schooling are much more poorer than those who have a, a levels of education. Having said so, we need to look at female-headed households that uh, uh, do uh, have money or not have money to buy food. Generally, female-headed households in the Northern Cape tend to run out of money to buy food than male-headed households. So when we look at that, and I will come to this point later because I need to argue the issue of uh, the poverty line and the way it affects women. Now, South Africa has what we call the South African multidimensional poverty. We call it SAMPI. It differs from the international one because the international one doesn't look at economic factors. In our case, we include employment. When we include employment, uh, we find that generally, Unemployment and lack of education contribute more to poverty in South Africa. Uh, uh, it tends to pro the two elements, unemployment as well as uh, lack of education, they contribute 63% to multidimensional poverty. Now, uh, the inequality in South Africa is, is dropping. While it's dropping, it came from 0 0.67 in 2006, it's now sitting at 0 0.65, but it is still amongst the highest in the world. Having said so, the inequality amongst women, when we compare them with men, is a bit lower. It's sitting relatively lower at 0 0.61 versus that one of men at 0 0.64. But we should not be misled, Chairperson. Uh, what happens is that while women remain lower, it means women are much more equal amongst themselves versus men in being uh, poor. So it means while they remain poor uh, uh, compared to men, they are much more equal. So it's an equality uh, in, a, in a difficult situation. Uh, let us look again, uh, Chair, at issues of income. Income, the Northern Cape has about 52% being drawn from wages and salaries, whereas the other part of their income, the majority of it comes from 
social grants, but it's not as west off as the Eastern Cape. The Northern Cape derives social grants uh, up to 30% of households, whereas in the Eastern Cape is 35%. Chairperson, issues of connectivity of uh, water, uh, improved as, as sanitation, are much more better in the Northern Cape because they exceed the national average. So are issues of the connectivity of electricity. They exceed the national average. Now, uh, 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 about uh, going back to the Northern Cape, about 32% of female headed households uh, do not have a person who is employed in their, household, uh, in their household. So let us look at it. Uh, women in the Northern Cape are actually uh, much more poorer than men. Then we look at issues of, do they have someone employed in their household? No. They run out of uh, money to buy food uh, uh, in their household. So when we look again at the issue of uh, 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 being victims of assault, the Northern Cape leads the pack in the whole country as being the province that has the highest proportion of females that happen to be victims of assault. It's followed by the Northern Cape, Northwest and the Free State. The other provinces are below the national average. Having said so, Chairperson, that they are below the national average, it doesn't make them any better because this whole issue of assault uh, remains a serious issue in our society. Going further, we are saying that the Northern Cape has about 81% levels of functional literacy amongst females. Now, Chairperson, when we go back to this issue of saying education and employment are biggest contributors, a lack, of, lack of them, lack of education and lack of employment contributes more to poverty. Now, when we look at the Northern Cape, where functional literacy uh, amongst females is lacking, and again, we see them uh, having struggling with issues of employment. We see them struggling with issues of having money to buy food. And then we come to the issue of poverty. Then it means that women in the Northern Cape are much more exposed to poverty than their male counterparts. Chairperson, I'm about to conclude. I'll conclude with national figures that indicate that about 60% of people started their own small scale business or, or uh, informal business because of unemployment. And the more, the higher the amount they are making, the lesser the amount they make in formal business, in informal business, uh, you tend to find more women. But when they start making more money, you find uh, men, more men than women. Uh, Deputy Chairperson and indeed uh, honorable members and uh, members from municipalities and other colleagues uh, the next slide uh, says something like Ndihela Kuala, which means I finish here. It's a long story, uh, Chairperson. Uh, uh, it has a history in the fact that over time, when our mothers in the village couldn't read and write, we had to write letters for them. And the standard way of concluding a letter was Ndihela Kuala. All the way, because our mothers couldn't express themselves any better to, to their husbands and never chairperson, never in the history of mankind and womankind should we ever allow ourselves where a, a section of the society, particularly women who have been largely been disadvantaged since time immemorial, be unable to express themselves, be it through issues of being able to read and write or be it with issues of a, a literacy on matters technology as we are moving towards technology. Chairperson, Ndihela Kwal. Thank you very much, Tate Maluleke. I, I think this is so, so much typical of you to end the way you have ended, but you are giving us at least a bit of hope for the, for the future. Thank you very much. Members, we are going to continue with the presentations up to a certain level where we will then have additional discussions. Let me just, before I continue, welcome the Honorable Audrey Maluleke, one of the MPs from the NCOP. She has just joined us. Welcome, uh, Honorable Member. Delegates, the next speaker that will give us a presentation 
is Ms. Maraj and Sua, and she's also one person that has joined us from the start, and she's still very enthusiastic about participating in our programs. So over to you, Ms. Maraj. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, um, and everybody else that is listening today. Uh, the, I'm from the Financial and Fiscal Commission, and today what I'm going to talk about is the role and function of the Financial and Fiscal Commission, FFC research on gender budgeting, FFC recommendations on gender budgeting, and uh, just a few concluding remarks, Chairperson. Uh, and then I'll just continue with the next slide. I'm not sure if the slides are on as yet. Um, okay. But essentially, uh, Chairperson, the role and function of the Financial and Fiscal Commission is that it is an independent permanent statutory institution that is established in terms of Section 220 of the Constitution. Uh, the enabling legislation is the Financial and Fiscal Commission Act of 1997. The mandate of the FFC is that the FFC acts as a consultative body, makes recommendations, and gives advice to parliament, provincial legislatures, organized local government, and other organs of state on the equitable division of revenue amongst the three spheres of government, uh, and in any other financial or fiscal matters in terms of the constitution and is provided for in national legislation. The role and function of the FFC is that FFC's um, focus is primarily on the equitable division of nationally collected revenue among the three spheres of government and on any other financial and fiscal matters. Um, they look at the legislative provisions or executive decisions that affect either provincial or local government, which includes regulations that may amend or extend such legislation. And in those instances, the uh, commission must be consulted in terms of the legislative prescripts. Um, FFC uh, chairperson has done research on gender budgeting, and there were various findings that emerged from this research. Um, and what were some of the findings was that despite government's commitment to gender equality through various policy and legislative measures, including anti-discrimination legislation and employment equity policies, unacceptable uh, gender inequality still persist. Looking very, very briefly at some of the statistics, black African female headed households are the poorest of the poor in South Africa. 41.3% of South African households are headed by females. Of these female headed households, 56% fall into the poorest uh, quintile one compared to 44% of the male headed households and only 31% of female headed households fall into the upper quintile five compared to 69% of male headed households. So unemployment rates tend to be higher for women than for men. And between the first quarter of 2008 and the first quarter of 2017, the unemployment rate for women has been consistently higher than the unemployment rate for men. And the national average in the first quarter of 2017 the unemployment rate for women stood at 29.8% compared to 26% for men and the national average of 27.7%. And then looking at the NEET rate, the NEET is um, the N-E-E-T, that's the not in employment education or training rates among female youth. Um, NEET basically are those that are not in school and, not, and neither are they in a college or university. In the first quarter of 2017, NEET rate for female youth aged 20 to 24 was above 50% compared to 46.6% for males. In light of the background, one avenue that should receive greater emphasis is the intergovernmental fiscal relations system. And a successful IGFR system would be sensitive to the needs of women and contribute to moving them out of poverty Innovations in policy design and implementation are required to ensure gender sensitive resource allocation. The objective here is to assess the gender responsiveness of municipal budgeting processes. This study that FFC did followed a two pronged approach, integrated development plans, IDPs in short, for of 30 randomly selected municipalities were reviewed. 
and uh, the FFC did case studies covering seven municipalities across four provinces, that is Kauteng, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and Free State. And there was particular focus on four sectors, local economic uh, development, water and sanitation, early childhood development, and housing infrastructure. And the municipalities that um, we looked at were based on their size and location, and there was a good mix of small, medium, and large, as well as urban and rural. Uh, then we, the findings, the results from this IDP scans was that there was a lack of gender mainstreaming and women empowerment as an approach. That is, government should have a policy or framework to guide gender uh, mainstreaming in, in the budgets of municipalities. Lack of gender disaggregated data equity versus mainstreaming for gender equality, more about numbers, and weak translation of gender equality commitments into fiscal commitments. That is, the IDPs show little evidence of the manner in which the IDP planning processes and budget offices have budgeted for gender mainstreaming. So there are various case studies as well that the FFC had conducted, as well as um, they looked at findings, what were the reasons for limited gender mainstreaming and gender budgeting in local government. So quickly looking then, uh, Chairperson, at the results from case studies, it was poor translation of the national agenda on women empowerment and gender equality into local government programs. There was inadequate sex disaggregated uh, data. The gender discourse is events driven. There was a lack of gender budgeting training and capacity building of decision makers that is budget officers must be uh, capacitated on gender budgeting. And currently there's no capacity in that area. Poor institutionalization of gender responsive budgeting and an absence of analysis of the gender impact of existing revenue and expenditures. Then looking at the findings, uh, that is the reasons for uh, limited gender mainstreaming and gender budgeting in local government. There's, a, there's an absence of an approved gender policy across all municipalities, absence of municipal gender mainstreaming strategy, and the personnel in management, that is those who make decisions and budget offices, those who track the expenditure, have limited knowledge of gender mainstreaming and gender equality indicators in the collection of gender disaggregated information is extremely limited. And so the FFC then made recommendations on gender budgeting. Um, the way, uh, uh, you know, written recommendations that were made, uh, there was government response and the status of that currently. And a few of that is that uh, the FFC recommendation was that the national and provincial governments to run gender budgeting pilots in a few municipalities first and evaluate results before wider application. And these pilots could be linked to ensure gender disaggregated data for key conditional grants as part of the grant framework in the Division of Revenue Act. Um, government's response was that they supported the proposal, which will help ensure that the collection and allocation of public resources is effectively carried out and contributes to advancing gender equality and women's empowerment. And it will provide tools to assess the different needs and contributions of men, women, boys and girls within existing revenue expenditures and allocations and will call for adjusted budget policies to benefit all groups. The uh, status of the matter currently is the uh, Department of Women is engaging National Treasury on budgets and has indicators in its strategic plan. So the FFC recommendation further goes on. The local government should institutionalize gender responsive budgeting process linked to integrated development plans and build capacity for gender mainstreaming and gender responsive budgeting at local government level uh, and ensure gender responsive appropriations and budget allocations and ensure gender sensitive public participation and consultations also at a local level. The government response to that was the gender responsive budget analysis along with legislation and other practical policy measures can address gender bias and discrimination it is a step towards increased accountability and public transparency, and it can shift economic policies leading to gains across society. However, the proposal's implementation may be hindered by capacity constraints within the municipalities. 
And the status of that is currently a uh, chairperson. There's no record of any progress that is being made regarding this recommendation. So there are key legislation that must be borne in mind. And if we have to review and revisit and look at this legislation, you will see that there's no gender lens or framework uh, for budgeting. And then maybe these acts can also be reviewed and looked to different lens. So the key legislation that needs to be uh, looked at uh, is some of it is the Municipal Fiscal Powers and Functions Act of 2007 and the Municipal Finance Management Act of 2003. In the Municipal Fiscal Powers and Functions Act of 2007, the minister must consult the commission before any regulations are made under the act. And in the Municipal Finance Management Act, draft national legislation directly or indirectly amending this act or providing for the enactment of subordinate legislation that may conflict with this act may be introduced in parliament only after the minister and the FFC have been consulted in writing on the contents of the draft legislation and have responded in writing. Uh, there's no doubt that a fire has been lit in the adoption of the Women's Charter and this uh, chairperson must also continue to remain burning. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Maraj. At least I can see we are getting into the hang of things. So thank you very much. <laughs> it is assisting. Now, for for the next uh, presentation, we will then give to Ms. Makubo from SKA project. Ms. Makubo, as a stakeholder, we have invited you and we are really, really pleased that you could make the time to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. I am quite honored to be part of this uh, program and to just be a woman at this time and you know discussing the important issues of the review of the Women's Charter. Um, just without really going um, too much on, I'll first start by giving an overview of the, SK pro the SKA project. What is it? What do we do? Um, what is our role in the Northern Cape? And then just some of the the impacts that we have had within the um, the province and also at least what we hope to achieve in future. So in general, or basically the, the square kilometer uh, project, square kilometer array project is an international effort that is uh, built across the or across many countries. And the aim basically of the of the project is to build the world's most powerful radio telescope, right? And that would mean that this instrument would have unprecedented uh, capabilities to study the universe and produce transformational science. Um, South Africa is a key partner of uh, the Square, the International Square Kilometer Array Observer, uh, the, the, the International um, Square Kilometer Array Observatory. Um, we and already uh, we've kind of started doing science and really, um, you know, doing yeah, just finding new things. I guess that that have not. Um, been discovered yet. So um, during the so the SK has um, developed critical skills and capabilities during the design and the um, deployment of the Meerkat ra radio telescope, which is the precursor to the SKA Phase One instrument and a premier astronomical facility on its own with global scientific and um, technological impact. So the Square Kilometer Array project is an um, yeah, so sorry about that. So just to give an, a, an overview of the, the, the project itself, it's that um, there are two, pro there's the first project, which is the, the Meerkat Radio Telescope, which is a 64 dish array that's funded by the de uh, Department of Science and Innovation. And at, at this point, we have about 64 dishes that stand in the, um, near the, it's about 80 kilometers outside of the town of Carnarvon. And um, those dishes basically function as a single um, instrument that, um, is called then the Meerkat Telescope. And that telescope is basically the precursor to the SKA, which is the Square Kilometer Array um, Telescope, which will then have a total of 197 dishes. Um, Meerkat essentially started doing science last July and um, it's really well on track. And so um, that's where we are with Meerkat. And then the SKA Radio Telescope is um, should be constructed, the construction of it should have um, be, um, commenced uh, next year, 2021, 
with all the disruption, the global disruption that we have at this point um, with COVID and stuff, we'll, we're yet to see what, what the developments look like in, 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 in future. So um, it will, the SKA project itself will happen in a phase, uh, in, a, in phase stages, meaning that the 197 dishes will then form part of SKA1. Thereafter, if there is international funding and if there is more international support and local support of, of the project itself, then we'll move to a further stage that, where um, additional dishes will be, lay, will be um, added to the instruments. There are some also that are being put together in Australia, and that kind of forms part of the, 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 the first phase of, of the SKA. And then in terms of um, just what the topic that we are speaking about here today, the topic that's at hand, which is um, gender uh, empowerment or woman empowerment rather, and just um, where we are as, as an organization. Obviously, we form part of the uh, broader National Research Foundation. And that means that we're also guided by um, some legislation that, gu that, that guides um, how government organizations, at least how government funded organizations work. And so we, um, for instance, are guided by the Employment Equity Act uh, 55 of 1998 which is at the core of the NRF's commitment to achieve representation in all occupation levels and um, the different cat categories within the, the organization. So that is basically the, the framework from which we work. And that's also just there to address um, the equity issues um, that, are, that do exist within the organization. At this point, internally, we have uh, made quite good progress um, in achieving uh, the long-term employment equity targets. Um, it's at a steady pace, and I think we can all agree that the work on, on transformation and work on, on um, just really balancing out the diversity within uh, different uh, people or types of people within um, organizations is a, is a lifelong um, project, but we have kind of made quite good progress in, in, in reaching our targets as per um, NRF policy and legislation. The overall representation that we have of Black staff stands at 72%, and the target, therefore, is 77%. So we have that 5% that we're, we're, we're lagging behind on, but progress has been made. Female representation, on the other hand, uh, the target, therefore, is about 44%, and we are standing at a 40.5% um, level of, of, of female representation. There are the um, other challenges that we, we do have, and that are, again, still part of the work that, that, that lies ahead, right, which is that um, female representation in management and senior management levels of, of Black people are still kind of um, an area of, of improvement for us. And um, that also accounts, or that also includes people with disabilities that are at 0.6% um, against the target of, 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 of 1.72. So there's, there are, is still some work to be done in, in the, in the um, South African Radio Astronomy Observatory in general, but good progress has been made and I think we're working towards it. The other um, question then, um, it, which is not necessarily internally, but also just in, in the environment that we work on, right, and the, the as an organization that is part of a larger community within the Northern Cape, within the actual towns that we work in, and also in South Africa, is what what who what what have we done in the local community that we work on? So um, Pixley Kazem is obviously um, the district municipality in which some of the towns that are impacted by the project are. Um, the two of the ones that form part of the bigger um, focus, I guess, for the project is um, the Kariabach municipality municipality which consists which in those towns the most affected uh, in, in in that municipality the most affected towns are um, Panvakes, Flay and Carnarvon and so within those projects um, we obviously as an organization have to think about how do we become a better neighbor how do we leave the the, the community and the area that we work in better than it is and and um, knowing that we're coming into a province or that has a lot of social issues, and I think this is not unique to the Northern Cape only, but we're coming in, into a, a, a community that has, where we inherit a lot of social issues and a lot of socioeconomic problems that we have to live with, with and kind of improve. So 
like um, the official from Statistics South Africa mentioned um, just a little earlier today that, you know, there's a lot of issues around um, unemployment. There are a lot of issues around inequality in general, gender inequality, um, poverty, the population density in the Northern Cape is at such a nature that the allocation of resources to the province is very sparse and, and um, quite, it makes it quite difficult for, for, for organizations to, or for societies or, co or communities to really um, thrive. So that is the kind of, um, these are the types of communities that we work in. These are the types of environments that we inherited. And so what that means is that we have to, as an organization, have a, a social role or an, a, a role to play in improving that, that environment. So part of that is, um, you know, when you look at all the, these challenges that we face as, as, a, as an organization working in such an environment, is that we had to come up with an approach that allows us to do work quite effectively and also um, try to achieve as much sustainability as possible, right? If, if there are so many issues, which one do you address first? And so the approach that we did is one that functions through mainly three channels. Um, the first of which is um, the human capital development aspect of, of, of our program. The commercialization one is the second one, and then the third one is the stakeholder en engagement aspect. So um, in terms of human capital development, our focus was that, um, and this really just um, piggybacking almost on, on the quote by Nelson Mandela that the most uh, powerful education is the most powerful um, tool through which one can change the world. And so a large, large, large focus of our um, contribution towards the communities that we work in and also towards women has generally been through the, the, the channel of education and human capital development. So what we have done in terms of human capital development is that we have um, essentially different programs within that that focus on just developing the, 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 the science and technology outputs in the country developing and in increasing the number of students that are able to study and finish up to uh, matric and then also from there move forward and actually become the very scientists that, that do work on, on the project that we have. Um, at this point, I think we have, yeah, so um, at this point we have almost tripled the, 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 the amount of, of astronomers that there are in the field through our human capital uh, development program. We have also, um, so we have also had, had given out about um, 1,251 grants and bursaries since the inception of the project. We have trained um, 40, we have um, supported 43 young professional graduates. So that's basically through a program where young people can go and um, after they graduate studies or after they, they graduate from university, they can go into internships and other young professional programs where they then become, you know, qualified people to, to, to um, go into the workplace and really address some of the, 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 the pressing issues of, of, of the country. Um, we have um, tripled the number of astronomers once more in, in, in the last 10 to 15 years that are existent in the country. And that's actually, for me, it's quite a something impressive, right? When you think about just the, the purpose of the, the, the SKA itself, that you're building this instrument, but you're also, in effect, are building an industry that will sustain itself and create new science and create new questions that pr will produce new science just by really investing a lot of, of, of resources into the development of, of human capital. Um, since uh, 2011, we've given 72 bursaries from um, to students in from Daar, um, Carnarvon, Loxton, Kimberley, Van Vexle, Victoria West, Williston, and other towns that 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 are in the surrounding area. And these bursaries are specifically to 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 for for students or young people to be trained as artisans. Eight of those people have come back to 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 become art, uh, have become qualified as artisans. Four of them have qualified as IT technicians and 17 of them are employed by the SKA. Obviously, um, you the hope is always that when you train local people that they would be able to or be in a position to come back and be the scientists that, that drive the project in the community. But sometimes they find better places and they really do spread their wings and um, 
go to all uh, places in, in you know or to different um, places in 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 the in the province. We also have um, in the country rather. We also have um, an FET bursary um, program where we have young people that are from uh, the Northern Cape specifically who um, are then taken and given the opportunity to go on a full bursary to go and study at an FET college to become artisans. And this year's cohort, we had um, 19 of them who ended up qualifying. And of those 19, I think we had eight who had who then be, were female. So within the context of, of you know, the, the large inequalities that, that we just had the presentation on that exist in the Northern Cape and how um, poverty is largely affects women than men there are certain pockets where women are actually becoming a much larger uh, proportion of people that are you know expected to in in the near future then develop and and grow such as those that are part of our bursary programs and that kind of gives us quite a lot of hope right that 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 we have young people that are actually women and that are in the near future there is we'll see the results in, in 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 person so um we also have, um, also some of these students again have been people that the, the field that they went into are, some of them became motor mechanics, boiler makers, fitting and turning um, artisans, instruments and control artisans. Some of them are in IT. Some of them um, just went into different types of skills that are needed within the community, like bricklaying and carpentry and um, all sorts of, of other, the, other skills. The plan is that um, in the next 10 years that we will be able to at least provide about 700 more opportunities to students in the local area. And this excludes, obviously, people that are, are, are outside. We have other um, programs that we have, like the robotics program. We have the school um, learner bursary program, which um, gives, you know, so what, what, what happened is that the SKA basically hires science and technology, I mean, science and mathematics um, educators. And the point of this is that children can be taught from a young age to do well in science and to get all the necessary attention and, and, and education that they need so that they can be ready to go into um, a tertiary education if they choose and, you know, come back and then plant um, those, that knowledge and those skills back into the local community of the Northern Cape. So that is essentially what um, that falls part of what uh, of the human capital development part of it. Um, the second part of it, again, going back to how we um, decided to attack the the, the 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 large monster of inequality and um, woman inequality within the province, is then through the second phase, which is um, which is um, just basically the commercialization aspect of 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 um, our program. So what that entails, in essence, is just trying to develop as ma many businesses or local SMMEs as possible for the development of the Northern Cape. So um, part of that is, is really just uh, that we have uh, within our, our um, the legal frameworks within the, the, the NRF and the South African Radio Astronomy, uh, Astronomy Observatory is that we have the responsibility of spending or the requirements of spending about 30% of our budget or anything that we spend in the Northern Cape, right? So we have a rule that says that if we want to procure something, it should be um, firstly or um, as a matter of priority within a 300 kilometer radius of sites. So that means all, for instance, all the vehicles that we procure come from the Northern Cape. They bought into art, for instance. Um, a lot of the equipment and the material that we buy for the projects for the SK, for the construction of Meerkat were bought in Carnarvon or in the neighboring towns. Um, a lot of the, pro the equipment that was bought uh, for the HERA project were also bought, um, actually bought down the street from where we live. So we do have that requirement and responsibility. And the reason for that is that we need to develop the local economy within um, the environment that, that we, we work in. The other part of that, which is again, the commercialization aspect thereof, is that we, ha are, um, we have a responsibility to try and develop as many um, small, medium and micro enterprises as possible. This is so that we can have uh, an actual supply chain from A to Z as far as possible where we can actually procure services and procure goods within the project and thereby um, 
investing within that the, the community that we live in. At this point, we have spent uh, around 285, let me just make sure that those numbers, yes, 285 um, million rands that was spent on suppliers and um, emerging contractors. So that includes people that um, do certain work that are contracted to do certain um, types of work at um, the, the, the Meerkat and SKA sites which is quite exciting to, you know, as at least in my position as a stakeholder coordinator, to meet people in the community. And, you know, some old Uemi comes to me and tells me how he, you know, built the tracks where the, the, um, the, the, the one of the dishes were built and how uh, one of the women, you know, for instance, who's also actually a, a big, con she, who did a lot of contracting work for us, explained how she laid the, the concrete, like those little stones, I don't know what they're called, but she basically laid, yes, yeah, so, so she basically laid all of those around um, the, the, excuse me, Miss um, Sylvia? I, I was just thinking aloud, you possibly paving when you speak about. Yeah, so it's, it's these little clippies, I don't know what you call them in English, that you put around um, the, the telescope so it's quite exciting to know that there are um lo that the people who actually built that are people that are south african people that are also predominantly for the northern cape and an amount of about 285 million has been spent on local contractors and just procuring goods for this project in the northern cape so um we have uh about 8790 direct and indirect job opportunities that were cr created a, a, a large um, chunk of these are um, job opportunities that happened during the construction phase of the project where um, we had to build the road, for instance. We had to build a road that comes from Carnarvon to, um, to sites. We had to build a road that makes it easier, for instance, for the project to happen, but also brings much more development to, to the community itself. Um, we have 383 technicians that were trained from the local community um, that are still part of that are part of this project and were at least at a point part of the project. Uh, we have um, and we have about hundred people that currently work in the uh, around site, which is around the Carnarvon area. Ninety percent of those people are from um, the northern. I mean, are from our local people. So those are people that were born in the Northern Cape and um, were not people from outside or um, foreign people, which is quite um, I think some good progress. In terms of the percentage of women that work in the in in that area, we have um, an amount of twenty four percent, which um, really does um, leave a bit of space for improvement. But I think again, the work of of of, of empowerment and the work of um, transformation is a slow process that that is certainly um, on course, at least at the at the, at the SKA. And then we have the third um, part of the of of our approach, or at least how we've tried to 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 take small bites at the big elephant of um, you know alleviating poverty and um, just creating a better uh, society and community that, that, than than what we found. Um, we have some um, community projects that we have um, started. Many of these then are. In fact, they're, they're quite tilted towards women in general. So the first of these is um, the Meerkat Creative Community Initiative. So the Meerkat, the, in short, is called the MCCI. And um, the, pro the, the basic objective of the program was that um, local people that are crafters or that are um, skilled in a type of you know, manual type of hand type of work where you, you create crafts and stuff that they would be able to uh, create whatever um, products that they had, but also then the important market of it, which also then flows into the commercialization aspects of things, is that they would be able to have access to global markets and to just national markets in general. So part of the program, um, there were 19 people um, from the from the four major towns that we focus on, which are Carnarvon, Williston, Brantley, and Van Vexley. We had 19 participants in total. 17 of those um, participants were women. And I know that there has been quite some critique in terms of um, that, that a lot of projects that focus on women's empowerment have been very craft-based or smaller types of business. But I think that the fact that these are are, are 
um, programs or these are our initiatives of such high quality that some of them have been able to provide um, corporate gifts, for instance, for some of the major events that we have uh, on site. An example of this is the um, interministerial, the African interministerial um, visits, which the Premier of the Northern Cape was also um, present um, uh, at, which happened last year. The other thing is that um, one of some of the crafters were also invited to display at the VNA Waterfront at the Cape um, Craft Design Institute. And that is quite, that's something that's quite impressive, right? Because that's where, you know, a bulk of the, 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 of a bulk of tourists, I guess, that, that come through to Cape Town can see those projects. So you have these special crafts that were created in a very small town in the Northern Cape by people with their own hands being, um, you know, sold to people that come from all over the world, which is quite um, exciting for us. So that's um, another project that we have. We have um, a lot of, um, we have some training opportunities as well that we have really, pro that we have provided to um, people in the Northern Cape. The other one that we are, that um, we are currently running as the uh, Northern Cape SMME Development Trust training. So the point of that is basically to create and to support as many um, SMMEs in the area as possible. At this point, I think we're running at about 50 um, of those SMMEs that are currently undergoing training to, you know, how do you formalize whatever craft or business that you have? How do you present that to a client who may be able to put in a lot of funding and support or in fact buy the product? So um, we have about 50 of those that are currently um, undergoing training. Some of them we have done business with in the past. Some of them are some are older contractors. And um, the other thing that forms part of that is that there's there's these relationships that that keep forming for, for for people that are within the Northern Cape, right? So the point is not only that those people that those SMMEs can do business with us, but that they can be sustainable. And should it happen that after fifty years, which is the expected time frame of of the SKA project that they would still be able to run for themselves and function and um, really drive their own local economies. So um, that's the Northern Cape SMME development uh, training that we have. We also have uh, a, a quite a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good approach in, in, in terms of how we see what community development is and should look like. Um, we believe much more in a bottom-up approach as opposed to us imposing on the community um, what it is that they should do. So by that, we have a community development grant that we have, we are currently um, actually finalizing now. And those through those grants, we essentially ask the community what it is that they need and what it is that, um, which areas that they feel that the community would need more help with what or what areas they um, would that so which areas basically need need more support or which projects that they have that would be to the benefit of the larger community so these are not business types of 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 of, of, of grants that we provide those are um, grants that are to the benefit of the community and what we found is that a lot of these program when women apply especially they do projects such as early childhood development types of, of programs which we are also looking at because in, in essence that's what, what you have through such programs is that you have the empowerment of women right if if there's an early childhood development center if there's a crash somewhere then it means that the mommy can have time to go and work and it means that she doesn't have to be um, the teacher of the child at home and um, the caregiver and both the child and all these different types of of, of responsibilities that women are often um, forced to to take up as opposed to going out and finding employment for themselves. So those are all the types of projects that we are um, supporting uh, as a way to also, by extension, then um, empower women and um, just make sure that we have a better community. So um, we also have other um, stakeholder engagement or um, community development types of involvements that we have where we um, partner with the local uh, with local government, so the municipalities that we work in, we partner with them in terms of just having um, programs for gen against gender-based violence, having programs that speak against, um, you know, 
rights of the LGBTQI community. And so um, those are also projects that we, we take part in and that we also support on, on the, the external level. Uh, the other thing that I would like to, um, that has been, a, I guess, a, a, a benefit to, to local communities or um, just for, by virtue of the existence or the presence of the SKA project itself is that we, there's, there are certain sectors that have benefited from the presence of the project. One of these, um, which is predominantly run by women, is the, um, the tourism industry. So when the project started, uh, there were there were about two guest houses, for instance, in one of the towns, which is in Kanapan. There were two guest houses that were functional and oh, that were operational and formal in the town. At this point, we have more than triple the amount of of of, of oh, in fact, it's quadrupled. I guess the, the amount of um, guest houses that there are in town. There are a lot of businesses that that are um, doing catering and often to a very very large scale than what would traditionally have been possible. The tourism industry is also um, uh, benefiting a lot from uh, just different types of tourism that 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 does exist. There are um, collaborations that we have with Northern Cape um, provincial government and Northern Cape stakeholders to um, just increase the number of, you know, astro tourism and different types of of fields and opportunities that have then become available to members of the community through just the existence of the project. And I think there are good examples that are, um, you know, down the road when you think about the SALT um, project and, 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 and just how people, local people have been able to really create the better Northern Cape through that. Um, then there's other forums that we also take part in, stakeholder forums within the community, community safety um, projects that, that, that are in the community really just to try and, 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 pr and promote uh, the, 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 you know, the, the good or the good of women or the interests of women within the communities, the community that we, we, we work in. And um, I think, yeah, I think that, um, again, this is quite an opportune time. This is quite a good time to, to really um, have the discussions that we're having and really just, um, you know, see what better solutions there are and how we as an organization can also play a part in creating a better a Northern Cape for, for women and by extension, all of society. And I think uh, the, the, the principles, I can, which is the last point that I will make, is that the principles that are outlined in, in the Women's Charter are truly, truly um, applicable to how at least we, we to, some, to the work that we're doing and also the work that, that does lie ahead. There are still some challenges. There is still some hard work to be done. And based on the bottom up type of um, the bottom up type of approach, where the community can, you know, um, raise or request or suggest certain um, types of projects that can be implemented in the community, I think that we are really open to ideas and to um, um, to ideas, yes, and suggestions on how we can just improve the cause of women around. Thank you very much. That'll be the end of my presentation. My name is Nomfunda Makubo. Thank you very much, Ms. Makubo. We didn't want to time you because it's mm -hmm. the first time that we get a presentation from you and an <laughs> input. So thank you very much. We will then now give to Ms. Oyama Bota to, to make the input before we are going into the discussions with all the delegates that participate in the present. Oyama Bota. Thank you, Honorable Lucas. Um, I did make a submission. Can everyone hear me? Just checking. Okay. Yeah. I did. Perfect. I did. Uh, my name is Oyama Porta. I did make a submission via video because I thought it was going to be very long, but it looks like uh, people don't mind things being long here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just um, read it's out. Mind, but you definitely mind. <laughs> SKA. Okay. Okay. Now, SKA is a multinational and we are very interested to see what they are doing because there is that charge from Pixley people that they don't see what SKA is, is actually doing. So it was important for us to hear what they are doing. So we do okay. mind time, so but you can continue. 
Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd just like to note that I've taken note in terms of um, what the previous uh, speakers have said in terms of the work that's being done. And obviously there, there is a bit of critique in terms of what they've presented, but what really stood out the most for me is the fact that there was a lot of highlight in terms of what's great that's being done and not so much on how can we uh, positively critique what's in the women's charter and what's specifically happening with regards to the Northern kids specifically. So um, the reviews that I've done were very specific to the charter in itself. And um, I looked at the fact that, for instance, uh, the women's charter recognizes and um, respects and it, it states the fact that recognition and respect is something that women want. But I'd like to add that it should be something that women need and deserve and not something that is just looked as as women want respect or uh, women want recognition. Women should be given that. But moving forward, I'd just like to state that um, I am a black woman um, from the Northern Cape and that alone for me has given me two strikes in terms of inequality because of, first of all, patriarchy because I'm a woman and two, uh, blackness because of my racist, uh, racism because I'm black. So that alone, let alone, is two strikes back in terms of inequality. But I do acknowledge that in the Women's Charter, they do acknowledge the fact that um, when you look at inequality and inequality, there is a reference made where they say that, yes, women um, can be equal, but then when you look at woman to woman as well, the fact that there's different strikes, like a person can be disabled, woman and black, then that's three strikes already. And those things are things that shouldn't be ignored when decisions are being made. But more so, speaking on the fact that I am in the Northern Cape and this is a Northern Cape specific uh, team, I'd like to add that we all are aware of the special issues that we have based on the apartheid regime. And these have caused very much of an institutional racism and inequality that still exists today because a person can access or not access resources and uh, information based on where they are, you know? And when I look at my journey and where I've, I've gone and from where I've gone and looking at the fact that when I apply to universities, for instance, one, when I tell you of my accolades, one would think that I've had like a very smooth ride. And that's not the case because I remember even in high school, um, getting access to information in terms of what you really want to do in, in, in varsity. And even moving out of varsity, looking at the fact that there are um, people saying that there are jobs, but then there isn't information that is even updated. Even in the Northern Cape um, website, for example, I've been there, there is literally a backwards in terms of information being given to uh, society. So I'd like to also add that um, in terms of the different articles, I'm just gonna touch on them briefly and just add what I can in terms of the experiences and um, things that I think are very important to take note. So when, when equality is, is concerned, I acknowledge, like I said, that um, how the charter says equality is said to be, right? And that when you have different strikes as a woman, uh, that it pushes you backwards and that should be something that's acknowledged. And then when you look at law, administration and justice, I've tied that article with the violence against women article. And so as long as gender based violence exists in a highly patriarchal society, surely all that they speak about on the point of women demanding equal protection, it will just remain that just on paper because how many cases have been swept away when women go and uh, report cases of gender violence and being told that they need to sort out things with their partners, you know? And I even read in one of the materials that were uh, provided that um, they quoted material from the IPU's 2014 outcome document. And it states that institutional frameworks must be in place and parliaments must be given capacity so that 
it is strengthened, especially when gender-based violence is um, concerned as well as gender inequality. But I did hear a speaker talking so about... Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. I did hear a speaker talking about um, lack of capacity. And for me, that that is very concerning, considering, considering the fact that there is graduates who are um, qualified, especially when it comes to issues of policy and uh, making change specifically within government or within parliament. But it, it's as if they they are not seen and there is a lot of uh, focus placed on the, um, the, the 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 science the women in science but there are women in policy as well who are willing to come in and do the work and capacitate where the government is always saying that they lack capacity and co coordination in terms of programs that they give out so in conclusion to all that i've said I will be submitting all the other points that I think should be included in um, the charter. But I do believe that the government or parliament in general has to be intentional about prioritizing um, actions and move away from speaking more on what uh, the challenges are, but more on what has been done just like SKA has done. I appreciate that very much. And I would also like to add that- Thank um, you, Ms. Buda. I think you are now really taking advantage of my leniency. Thank you very much. We will leave you there. Okay, and thank go you. To Ms. Asanda Nguenyama. Asanda Nguenyama, whilst we are waiting for Asanda to uh, uh, let on, we want to welcome Ms. Hugo Sengwe, one of our MPs as well as the Acting Secretary to Parliament, Ms. Chawa, I see that you have joined the participants. Can we Thank you, Chair. I'm in, Chair. I'm in, Chair. Thank you, Chair. My name is Asana Ngonyama from Pistika Seme in Northern Cape. Mm. Okay, are you listening, Chair? We are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I've got only, uh, I can say it's an input, ne? because of most we know that there's an issue of women entrepreneurs, ne? And yet, mostly women were, were, okay, let me start, let me start, let me start, because I was not prepared, sorry, Chair. Thank you, Chene. We all know that women were traditionally excluded from economic activities, ne? So, therefore, my input is that government should enhance and fast track, and fast track its intervention in prioritizing the empowerment of women entrepreneurs so that it can also address the issue of high rates of unemployment among women. And the second point that I'm having, are you listening, Chair? Okay. The second point that I'm having is to addressing the scourge of violence and abuse against women and children. All right. Government should do more in publicizing the acts of abuse in women and children, and there must be more intervention aimed at defeating this abuse of women and children by men at all spheres of government. And also, lastly, ne, I want to emphasize the Elandika, the women empowerment. We all know that women are still underlooked, especially in, in terms of government spheres. Ne? So, if maybe we can be, may, maybe the the women's charter can address this issue also of women empowerment. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Asanda. I just want to uh, participants, you can. Hello, Chair. You can open the icon on participants and then use the raise hand uh, uh, icon just to, to, to get our attention. But we still have a list of people here that want to speak, so we will give now to Ms. Carol Whitaker. Whitaker. Carol Whitaker. Thank you, Chief Person. I'm Carol Wotika from the Northern Cape. I'm sure you will be able to see me. I've submitted a video on my views on, um, on, on the Women's Charter, but I'm very interested in the FFC's um, research on, on gender budgeting, because I still think that if you, if you can see me, Can I continue? Okay.
because I'm I'm very interested in in the in in what the the research says on budgeting because I'm of the opinion that we should look at we should look at what um, what the charter says and the existing legislation and regulations and policies and then just strengthen um, the policies or implement the policies for that matter um, in relation to the women's charter. Thank you. Uh, I sorry, I was struggling to unmute. Tenjue Pinar will be the next speaker. Tenjue Pinar. No, finally, if you indicated that you want to speak. Tenjue Pinar, yes. Tenjue not available. No, we will put unmute. you up. She must unmute. Unmute, please. Okay. Yes. I've, I've got yeah. only two points on the freedom charter of the women. Um, my first point, uh, Chairperson, is about the women and poverty. And the second point is the equality of women. Did you hear me, Chair? Hear, hear me, Chair? Chair? Did you hear we me? Do. You are very clear. We hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my first point is about the uh, women party. I think I can Firstly, can I introduce myself? I'm Tenjiwe Pinar from Northern Cape, the place called Colesberg, and the Pixlika Um I just want to have the inputs concerning the women and poverty. Uh, I think here in the Pixlika Semi, if you can check Chairperson, there's a some places that are, are facing a huge challenge um, concerning the poverty. And I think the department or, yes, the department con should consider that because there's a lack of um, jobs in, in, in big speaker same. But there are some places that whereby there are some people that are, are really um, having the the, the lifestyle that is very good in Pixlika. And in the elite of women, the senior position are led by men. Now we are all here at Big Slicker as men. And I think that must be also considered just because uh, we as women, we are grabbing the... Can I continue? Let, let yes. continue. Network is a bad bad system, but you can continue. We we don't hear you okay, so clearly you. now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still on the position of equality as women. Yes. Continue, uh, please. I'm I'm clear now. Hello. Unfortunately, can can, can I, I continue? Back? Can I come back to you, sister? Okay, no, it's fine. Okay, let me take other people. I come back to. Okay, you. my chair. Okay. okay. The next person will be okay, Shamane. Shamane. Shamane van der Yeffer. Shamane. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. It's a wonderful opportunity. For... Yes, after so many. I'm speaking. Yes, you are out there. We hear you. <laughs> Continue, Shamane. <laughs> Yeah, it's a wonderful. Yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity for me to be part of this program. Thank you. Unfortunately, as Ms. Bota said, some of the things that I wanted to speak on is not addressed this afternoon. 
but it is in the charter. Must, must just make your input, Shemay. It's very important for us. I will start off by acknowledging the presentations made by all your uh, guests this afternoon. And And your and especially, I think while I speak on uh, the SKA, I'm very happy to hear what Ms. Uh, Makubu presented to us. Though, when I passed through Carnarvon on the 10th or the 11th of January, I could not really see the changes that the SKA brought there. Remember, I lived in the area for 14 years. So, of course, I think we should take time to see the results. I'm very happy to see the develop, human development that is taking place. Because I also heard from other children in the area with whom I had conversations of the changes that the SKA made to their lives by giving them the opportunity to be educated. The lady spoke about the areas that they serve, and I did not hear anything they doing or the how they're helping Fraserburg, which is also in close proximity of the SKA. Then on the Van Bakesley area, there is the area that uh, they, Van Bakesley hasn't got water. And if a place hasn't got water, who is the ones that is bearing the brunt the most? It is the woman because they are the ones that need to see to it that there is water in the house. So I think SKA must look in there how they help the community to join up with other stakeholders and to ensure that Van Veksle gets the water that is so much needed. It's not only Van Veksle that's got a water problem, but Van Veksle I think has got a water problem that can be addressed easily through the water coming from Prisca to Copperton. Then on the health, Ms. Lucas, as uh, you know, I worked in JTG for 15 years and Can I am still you saddened you by the fact that the woman in that area still has to lose babies because of waiting on an ambulance in the remote rural parts of the country. So I think inequality in that case is also a very serious issue. It's very serious and it needs to be addressed. I really do hope to be part of this program or to retire and rewrite the charter. As Ms. Wota said, uh, there is people in the province that is able to be part policy makers. There's people on the ground because if you look at policy making and if you look at especially having this um, public hearings, who take part in the public hearings? It's those people that is educated. But what is the voice in the village saying? What is the, the indigenous knowledge of what they have to say, how things can be done and how things can be done better? Uh, last thing I think I want to put on here is rural democratization. We have, or the government has now signed the TKB bill, the, the uh, traditional Khoisan bill, or whatever its name is, but yet our people don't know what is in the bill. Our people has not been educated. And in most of our areas, and especially the area where I work, we have got traditional leaders. And education is, as she mentioned, what Madiba said, I think we should do more public education amongst our women to ensure that they are able to capacitate themselves and also to erase the inequality or to close the gap of inequality amongst our people. Thank you, Ms. Lucas. Thank you, Shemaine. We appreciate your present your input. 
members, can I just ask the participants, whoever is going to speak, make sure you switch on your video so that we at least can see your face. We are going to Samantha. Samantha, we don't see your your surname here. Samantha V. It's Samantha, it's Samantha Vault, Chair. Yes, speak, Samantha. Uh, thank you, Chair. Please, uh, can, you put, can you put off your, your, or just put off the sound of your TVs when you are speaking so that we don't have the echo in the back? The TV okay. can stay on, but put the sound off. Yes. Okay, Continue. thank you, Chair. Um, it's Samantha Volt uh, from Douglas, um, Siangima Local Municipality. Uh, I would like to first uh, thank the petition uh, from Stats SA um, to, uh, giving us all that information in the stats of the Northern Cape uh, and as for South Africa as a whole. Um, the stats are quite worrying to me. Um, you know, women are still not... Uh, uh, women are still not um, represented and women are still bearing the brunt um, of, of not being included in the economy and, and facing such major um, uh, problems and troubles in, in society. Uh, well, I have my, my input is twofold. Um, in the Siangnuma uh, local municipality, well, Douglas specifically, um, we have issues that are already addressed in the Women's Charter, but hasn't been rolled out to us. Um, for instance, the Women's Charter talks about um, informal traders having access to something as simple as a public toilet to be able to, if you sell your fruits by the, by the street, to actually have access to a public toilet, a place that is clean, that is safe, where you can go to. In Douglas, in my municipality, we don't have that yet. Um, and, and those are the things for me that, that I feel like it impedes and it, and it so lacks in, in my province and in my, um, and in my region specifically. Uh, then I would like to make, um, I will also submit my submissions um, and my inputs. Um, but for me, I would like to go on to health as well. Health, um, we need to... Uh, we have made inroads on the fact that uh, sanitary products are now, uh, no vet is paid on them anymore. But I think we really need to include that sanitary products must be free of charge, just like condoms. It must be free of charge because a lot of young people, a lot of women do not have the money for such products. And, and that literally impedes on their uh, human um, right and, and, and their right as, as a woman to actively participate. Imagine not having sanitary products. How are you going to uh, effectively compete with males out there um, to go to a meeting, um, to, to go to school, for instance? So for me, that is important. Um, and then lastly, business skills and empowerment centers. I believe we, we, we know the opportunities are out there uh, however, we don't have the access to those opportunities. And, and I think we need to now have what we call business skill centers, specifically for women, where women can come and have access to things such as internet. Internet is such a big problem still in marginalized communities, such as uh, a town like Douglas. Um, we need to now have those business in, uh, a skill and empowerment centers where women can come and, and go onto the internet where we can help women set up their business plans, where we can help women um, uh, accessing funds from all these platforms because we know they are out there. But our women who want to run businesses and who have these great ideas of doing businesses, um, they do not yet have those access to those platforms. Um, lastly, Chair, um, unemployment is rife in South Africa. We all know that. Um, and it's good that we... There are bursaries out there for kids to go to school and for us to study further. But I think we really now need to make more inroads on entrepreneurship in our, in our uh, country and specifically also in our province. Um, so I would really like to see that more bursaries become available for people to study uh, a trades that don't necessarily allow you to go and work for someone else, but that would help you and enable you to become an entrepreneur. For instance, uh, bursaries for becoming a beauty technician, um, uh, landscaping, um, 
barber, barbers um, and, and stuff like that. I feel like those are the skills that, that can help you to become an entrepreneur um, and not just participate and going to work for someone else. Um, those are my submissions and those are my inputs. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Samantha. We will then uh, give to Second Chance Group the representative from Second Chance. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you clearly. Okay. Um, my name is Tandi Wepuga. I'm coming from Colspec. I'm a representative of an organization called Second Chance Group, which I'm the founder of. Um, the, what I want to speak about um, is, the, is Article Number 10, Violence um, Against Women. Now, what I want to just speak about is um, I started this particular organization, Second Chance, um, mainly because I wanted to assist or help women who have been abused, um, who have experienced um, violence in their lives. And it's not just women, but it's also children. Now, one of the challenges that we experience mostly when we're trying to do such services, um, let me just give a little bit of background before I speak about the challenges um, as pertaining to the, 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 the charter itself, is that the reason why I started this organization myself is because of the area we're in. Colesburg is a semi rural area, um, one that is small in, in, in its nature. Now, when you look at services that women or um, people in general in Colesburg need access to, we are quite far from everything else. Um, for example, if you're living in Colesburg and most of the services are in DR, um, that is about 167 kilometers away from where we are. And services like counseling, you can find in DR. So I started this organization because I wanted to provide such services closer to home, not just only in Colesburg, but um, in the surrounding areas. Now, one of the things that we are experiencing or that is our challenges that I would like also to be noted when we're developing um, the charter, the women's charter. One is that when we go out looking for support, especially in our local municipality, you find that the fact that you are a woman becomes a problem when you approach because one, when, we, when we're running the service like we are running, you need space to be able to meet your women. Where you're going to do counseling, where you do, you're going to hold a support group, a safe space where women can come in and address their issues without a man of fearing um, the, 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 the judgment or the stereotypes. But then when you, when you are going out to the municipality or to, to the representative of government and you're asking and you're telling them about your needs, the fact that you're a woman, already you are marginalized, and that becomes a problem. It's about who you are, who you know, and if you don't, if, if, if you are not well known in the society, or if you do, if you do not um, uh, belong to a particular party, then that becomes a problem. So those are some of the things that, as we speak about equality for women, those things need to be addressed. Number two, when it comes to funding of such programs, we say we want to empower women, we want women to take up space, but when we also look at organizations that occupy our areas, I'll make an example. There are wind farms in our local area. Um, one is in Noport, uh, which is about 50 kilometers from Colesburg. Now, you, you, they say that they offer funding for local organizations. But now what is interesting is that you approach them and then they say they only fund organizations that are within a female radius. You look at Northern Cape, that is not practical because the way of the area is distributed. It, in areas in Northern Cape, all of them are scattered. There's no, um, so it makes it difficult for organization to develop and which it then means that um, all the people that you're offering services to are now at a disadvantage because without funding, let's just be real, um, without funding, it becomes difficult for people, even with their vision, even with their in interest, even with their enthusiasm, without the proper funding, it's hard to do certain services. I'll make an example of what I'm talking about. One of the things that we experienced when we were looking out and going out for funding, one of the things that they asked was, how long have you been operational? And we said, we've been operational less than a year. And then they said, no, we do not fund startups. Now, my question is, if you do not fund startups, to all for, for organizations, 
who is going to be maintaining the business or the organization or the NPO in the beginning of its lifespan. Um, it, when we offer um, um, services to women, we want to keep them counseling. Well, for example, I, I, I called a, 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 a clinical psychologist in the R. One session is 600 rands. Now we want to offer those services in Colspec for free and other surrounding areas, but then without an, uh, proper funding, you cannot be able to, um, what you call, you, you cannot be able to, um, to employ a clinical psychologist because you need to pay them. So that means the people who are needing the service of getting counseling, then they don't get it. And when you do it yourself, it, it, it doesn't hold much weight. There's also those scrutiny. So when we are talking about equality, when we are talking about women empowerment, we also need to look at the bottom line, the people who are the game changers, the people with the resources, how do they respond? How do they handle um, matters of such matters? Because when, you, when, 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 you, when you're looking or you're looking for assistance from the government itself, the government is the first one to push or the representative, not necessarily the government, but the representative in the local municipality are the ones that put you at disadvantage. It's about who you are and who, where you belong. I don't know if anyone um, can relate to this or if there's a way we can get this sorted out in local municipalities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tandiwe. Jane, Mafilika. Mafilika. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Great eye, Mase. Am I connected, Chair? You are, and you may speak. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, firstly, I want to thank the opportunity of being of, of being part of this uh, of this session, uh, I just have a few points to raise uh, around the around the aims of the charter as the latter speakers really raised uh, 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 many of what I wanted to raise. Uh, regarding the few that I have, uh, I want to raise. Um, the aims of, 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 our, of our charter is to have equal rights in relation to, in relation to proper, uh, property, education, and health for women. Women participation in, 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 in designing and implementing uh, uh, development programs to meet our needs as women. But that doesn't really happen. It, it, it is there, it's, it's good book, and, and when coming to the implementation part of it, then it becomes a challenge. And when, 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 when you look at the transformation, the gender transformation part, uh, the promotion of gender equality, we as women need to share, we, we need to be, to, to be part of sharing of, of, of the resources that have to be shared, and we have to make decisions for, for ourselves and, 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 and be empowered as women in all spheres of, of, of government. And, uh, the, the, the other thing I also want to raise today is violence against women and children, especially your girl child, is most frequent in our, in our region. Looking at M. Um, Tanjani, as I'm in, in, in the M. Tanjani municipality, and also I'm, I'm fortunate to be uh, 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 also working in, 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 in the whole region. And, and, and looking at the violence against women and, and, and girls, it's it's really it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's it's still it's still a, a huge there's still a backslide on the gender gap regarding employment, health facilities, education, and gender-based violence facilities. When I speak about gender-based violence facilities, I speak about uh, specifically about uh, uh, places where uh, uh, your facilities whereby women when they are violated can be really, I'm not talking about, uh, we don't want to see where a person is, will just be comforted or, 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 or take to a session for two, three days. But we need to see proper, and when the person comes from that facility or is being assisted at that facility, you must see change and it must be an ongoing thing. But now you, the person is only being assist, assisted for maybe two, three days. After that, back to where she or, he, or where, where she is being violated, and that doesn't really speak to what we want to see. We 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 really want facilities where the uh, the females can be comforted when when they are violated. You 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 go to police stations. I know for a fact that at police stations we do have facilities whereby women, when they are violated, 
and when they go and lay a charge, they, there is facilities that are, 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 are where, where they can be assisted. But that is not enough because there are no professional pe people there. And uh, those police officials that are there at the, at the uh, SCM, as, as LCF, they are not really, all of them are not, are not, are not really empowered to deal with those uh, uh, kind of, 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 of people. That is what we want to see, Che. And, 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 and also, the other challenge is funding of these NPOs, as, as the latter speaker has, has, has mentioned. It's a, it's a huge challenge because really, if you are a person who's starting with a business, starting to put on, because you, you need to collect a few female to, uh, 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 to get uh, off the ground and to assist, because it's all, it's, it's all about assisting other women and also empowering other women and get the dignity back, uh, get the dignity back of the person that has been violated, of that woman or a girl child that has been violated. We want to see those things. We want to see NPOs that were uh, a fully fleshed NPO where there are professionals who can speak and who can help and assist these people. As a person who's going around in the district, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad to see that there are still places like your fun base where you go to your, there's really the rural areas in, right. in, 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 in the Pacific region. We still have to do uh, a lot more. And, and I also understand the, and hear the, what the, the SKA, SKA has mentioned and what they have done. Um, I appreciate what is it that they have done. And also all the other presentations I've heard what the what, 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 uh, presenters uh, mentioned. But there's still a really, there's a huge gap, a, a huge gap that uh, we as female feel that we are not really on the ground and we are not feeling what is it there, what, what is it that we are having? And uh, having this uh, uh, charter founded by these members uh, uh, in 1954 up to now, for me, we are still really far behind it. I really, uh, you, and in, 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 conclude, uh, in, conclude, in conclusion, yes, in conclusion, I just want to say, can we see can 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 we as female really feel what what is being done and not uh, just sit we sit here in and and what needs to be corrected and the end of the day things are not really at at, at ground level. I thank you, Jane. Thank you, Sir Jane. What we'll give to Lucy Billy. Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lucy Billy. Is Lucy there? Is Lucy there? Can you hear me? We hear you yeah. now. Can you we hear, hear me? You now. Right. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Chair, my name is Lucy Billy from M. Tanjani in Bristol, also a ward councillor of Ward 7. I only have two you points. Put off every other I couldn't be part of the opening. Lucy, if, you if your TV is on, put your TV off. Right. And you can sit out with TV. Then you can continue. And you can sit out with TV. Oh, that's very sound absent. Oh, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry, Jen. Jen, there are only two points on equality, on equality for women. I am there. Are you, are you hearing me? Do you hear me, Jen? Well, loud and clear, we hear you. We hear you. Okay, okay. Continue. I've got two points there on equality. The first one, will be that the uh, ch women's charter must also look to create an opportunity for to uplift women in rural areas. That is the first one. And the second one, they must all, it must also include women in decision making, in decision making. And the third one will be it must also construct women who are confident and competent to compete in a world dominated by, by men. 
because a woman are not ready when it comes to, to power. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, Chair. You, uh, we, there is someone who raised his hand that is indicated as iPad. If you know you have raised your hand and you are from an iPad, can you just make your input? We don't want to leave out anyone. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Nomo Andamaki Bula. I'm also from the Financial and Fiscal Commission. I just wanted to share in what uh, Ms. Maharaj has also presented in terms of the Yes, Che. Will it, will, it, will it matter if I just give Zodwa before you, then you can be part of the those that will respond. So can we just okay. go to Zodwa and Zeku? Then after that, you will speak. Zodwa? Thank you very much, Che. Um, I, appreciate, um, I appreciate that. Um, firstly, I just want to say something about um, the presentation made by Mr. Maluleke. I don't know where he took the stats from because we are still feeling the pinch as women. First of all, I'm going to talk about um, uh, number one, women, politics and sex and sexism. Because we as women, sometimes we feel like we don't belong when you want to take part in politics. Number one, uh, our structures are mainly male dominated. Women are only fit to be secretaries. And even if you, 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 you as a woman, you want to pursue your, 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 your career in politics, that, that, that cannot be um, done because you know that um, you are not good enough as a woman. My second point is um, the, sorry for that, I'm just looking at my notes. By oh, all means. Yeah, it's challenges and in navigating career and motherhood. Number one, you get women who have children with challenges or children with disabilities. Um, those women find it very difficult to pursue their studies or to pursue their careers because of the problems that they are, uh, are having with their children at home. And secondly, in the Department of Education, we find that there are children also who are having learning disabilities. Those children doesn't have any institution, especially in the Pisilikas, and the only institution that is available is in Kimberley, which is only limited to a number of learners. So those kind of women are being deprived to pursue their careers, to pursue uh, whatever that will make them um, develop in, in, in the society. And um, thirdly, the patriarchy in the, in, the, in the workplace is still rife. Sexual harassment in the workplace is still rife. And I think the charter has spoken about that, but to me, nothing has been done or nothing um, has been taken into cognizance in, in terms of those challenges that we are facing in the, in, the, in the workplace. And still, senior positions are being held by men or held by men. And I don't know the 50 and the 50,2% that Mr. Maluleke was talking about. There is no fair balance in, in the workplace. So I think that that needs to be taken into cognizance. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Zodo. I think you uh, you were the last person that indicated that you want to speak. But now that I look at the screen, I see there is Norm Two. Well, let's give Norm Two. She will be the last one to speak, and then we will allow Nomonde and others that still want to to help us with responses. Norm Two. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank Can you. I be heard? Uh, Honorable Chair, in Article 4 of the Women's Charter, I saw that there is education and training. It, it talks uh, specifically about sex education that should be provided to boys and girls at all the levels of school. I think that is a good point <clears throat> because there's a, a, a very big percentage on teenage pregnancy. 
But Uzoto has already alluded to the fact that the issue of the, la the learners that are having a learning problem, we have to, to add it on our uh, women's charter because there are really no institutions in the, no, in the Pixlika Seme region. And that causes uh, the children to roam around and uh, street kids are being <coughs> found everywhere in Pixlika Seme, especially in our sub-region, that is the uh, Siatemba sub-region. And we do have a lot of educators that are trained and, and, and who are doing a uh, psychology of education. So those people should be taken into cognizance so as to be employed in those places, especially women. That is my only point I wanted to raise. Thank you. Thank you, Nomtu. So I, if the people from the uh, state's essay is still there, we will allow Nomonde to, to say something. If at all they want to say something, then it will be good. Uh, uh, I'm speaking about stats SA. Unfortunately, the mayor and the speaker is in a in the regional executive committee meeting. They cannot make it. I spoke to the speaker just now. Now, so uh, now Monday, you can take it on. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say what, um, uh, to echo what Ms. Maharaj was saying in the presentation, what we also find interesting in that study, which could perhaps be used as a solution, is that we found that in the municipalities uh, that we conducted interviews and, and case studies on the IDPs, we find that over 70% of those municipalities uh, have the information about male and female uh, in, they just use that information for profile for profile population and unemployment. Yet this information is just the basic information that can be used for planning and budgeting processes, so that um, the budget becomes a uh, gender gender sensitive. So I just wanted to raise that point that municipalities seem to be using that information just to profile population and un unemployment. Yet this is the basic information that we can use uh, in the planning and budgeting processes so that we are gender sensitive. So we actually find that over 70% of municipalities have this information but is not used except for profiling uh, population and, un and unemployment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Namonde. I, I think it is a very good point that you brought in here because at the first engagement, we also heard that there is a bulk or a, a random uh, a, a kind of, of uh, conducting to municipalities or to the lower levels without really taking into account as to how it can be broken down into gender and as well to respond to poverty and as well to respond to inequality that is that is found. So if there is specific uh, conditionality to, to most of the of the resources, it might happen that there is a, an improvement in how it is paid to address specifically women that is clearly in all the information, still those that are poorer, still those that are bearing the brand. But so if there is anyone from, from States SA, that want to make an input now, we will allow. Uh, and Madam then Chair. also, yes, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm still here and Neil is still uh, here. So, oh, SD, I didn't know you were still here. Uh, I didn't also hear that you are not here, but I, I thought by all means, you've been with us all the time. We don't want to, unless you love us so much and you don't want to leave us, and then we will appreciate it. So if you, well, if there, you have anything you want to say, if there yeah, is anything that you want to say, we give you an opportunity now. Thanks, Chair. Uh, on the point of uh, the empowerment and uh, emancipation of women, that says we seem to have women sitting at 50.2% uh, in Sol Plaki. And in general, indeed, nationally, women are sitting at about 52%. But what we tend to see, and men are sitting at 48%, but 
What we tend to see, Chairperson, is that uh, when it's lower equivalence of jobs, it tends to be occupied by women. But when the jobs go higher and pay a lot more higher, those jobs are occupied by men. And I'll give a good example. In the, employ in the number of uh, employed people in South Africa, we have about uh, uh, closer to uh, 37 million people that are employed. Uh, out of those, uh, about 30%, which is about 10 million, are employed in elementary and domestic workership. Actually, 23% are, are employed in domestic workership. And the majority of those chairperson are women. Almost every household, when you go there, you're looking for someone to tend their home when they're away. Uh, almost 90% are women. And then you go to clerical jobs, still women. But when you go to managerial jobs, it starts to become men. And I've used this example previously that look at a stall set up, not even a stall, a group of uh, women starting a business on the roadside. They cook pap and uh, flays there and some spinach and cabbage on the roadside. They sell and they do very well, but they don't make a lot of money. When government goes there to put proper stalls where they can have very good sheds and everything and they can connect gas stoves and electric appliances, all of a sudden the ownership changes to men. And at what point it changes, nobody understands. So the point is when we deal with the issue of emancipation of women, we should uh, not only look at the numbers and the statements that we make, we should look at the socialization of uh, our, our space and I think uh, Ms. Botha also raised the point earlier on that uh, this, the spatial uh, environment that we find ourselves, the apartheid uh, city space is still very prevalent in South Africa. And for that matter, it tends to exclude uh, uh, black people in the majority and it tends to exclude women. So when you look at those kinds of issues, when you want to deal with even economic empowerment, for a woman to enter that space and grow, it's very, very difficult. So the numbers are always telling us, but I think we need to deal with the socialization of uh, the spatial, uh, uh, the space, the whole issue of socioeconomic culture. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, SG. And uh, uh, SKA, do you want to say something? Um, I think there were two, thank you so much, Chair. Um, I think there were two points that were raised um, in terms of uh, our involvement in the Van Vexflay area and the um, delivery of water in the area. It actually happens coincidentally that we, that I was personally involved in that project. It came out of my office where we, um, because of the, I think this is a, an old issue that has been there since, you know, when you speak to members in the community, they'll tell you that it was in the, you know, 1900s already and the 1800s where um, the water issue in Van Vexflay was really a big issue. Um, the responsibility majorly does lie on the municipality itself, but obviously we as an organization that also is part of government can't just look away and say that, oh, this is none of our business. So what we did do or what we have done is that um, during the peak of a crisis when there was no water being delivered to Van Vexflay, I myself with my coworkers, um, also the organization itself offered our water tank as well as water supply from um, you know, some of the, the water supply that we do have to go and deliver to um, Van Vexflay. And unfortunately, due to the condition of the roads in, in, in you know, from Carnarvon or from sites to uh, Van Vexflay, our uh, we picked up trouble and we had mechanical problems with our truck and it couldn't um, work anymore. So what we did then as a, a secondary step then to provide the people of Van Vexflay with water is that we... Um, contacted the, the military and they were kind enough to offer us help and uh, provide their own trucks from Da'ar to go and deliver water. We then passed on the basin back to the municipality who after some time then carried on with um, what they with, with what um, they usual, usually did which is delivering water daily to Van Vexflay. These are issues that we again, they, we can't do everything we 
have limited resources that are dedicated to building the greatest um, radio telescope in, in, in the world. But we do take our position seriously and do report all these issues to um, the relevant platforms wherever possible, as in, we do with the working uh, the Northern Cape uh, Provincial Working Group and other platforms where we do have a voice. So we do have an advocacy role that, that, that we do play. And I'm also grateful, um, before I go on too long, I'm also very grateful that we, we you know, the, the issues that are raised in this platform do make links between how something that seems unrelated to women really does affect women because the water issue is a women's issue indeed. And the childcare issue is a women's issue indeed. So um, I think we should just take those conversations forward in other platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nomfundo. Uh, Nomfanelo, do, do you want to say something? Mabetla, did you want to say something? Are you fine? Oh, okay. Because I saw you indicating the side, but then I saw you, you drop your head. That's why I'm asking. So it's fine. Nomonde uh, spoke on behalf of FFC, so we have given you an opportunity. Just before we will give to, I hope, Audrey, you are still there to do the vote of thanks before we are finished. But before, I, I just want to appreciate the fact that it's clear that when we engage you as the women from, from Pixley Kaseme, you took us very serious because we can see that you really interact with the, with the women's charter. You try to understand what it is all about. And that is what we do appreciate because we can see that you are taking us very serious. Kelly, what you are doing is, is very unfair because we are trying to make closing remarks now. Mm -hmm. But because we don't want to suppress you, let, let us allow you. Kenny Mutsamai. Yes, thank, thanks, Chairperson. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that is my colleague. I don't know that Kenny name. <laughs> you may continue, Mr. Butsabai. Kenny Kibato Lebuha, Hulum Sevizo Montolu, yet a boom. Hobani, Renala Matata, Mitzi, and Mitzikim Sevizia boom. But I rather boom Mehavatena, a Matsoro, Muntongo Lungueta, Etasiam, Kalibuha. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutsamai. Ma'am, I, I still want to say something. I ask you, no, Mabetla, no, 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 no. you not I ask you, Mabetla, you didn't come through, but you may ask continue. Me, can I come through, please? You may continue, Sisi. Okay. Thank you very much, Deputy Chair. And let me take this opportunity and welcome all the presentations. To me, ma'am, the COVID-19 has exposed us a lot, more especially in inequality, unemployment and poverty, and it has affected mostly the women. So in our women's charter, we have now to think and check how far did we go? Because most of the women, if you see the choose, for food parcels, that's the majority there, it's women. If you see in unemployment, the women are there. So really, it, we can't say we are celebrating 25 years of the freedom of the democracy and the women's charter. We have now also to look and see what the COVID-19 has Yes. assisted us with. i like to go back to the to Nomfundo. Yes, I still know that the SKA is science and technology. Because sometimes when we talk about the women, we always think that they We cannot go in that area. What bursaries are they on which careers or on which uh, 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 subjects so that we can know and so that we can also encourage our girls 
to take some of these um, these subjects. The last point that I because most of the the points that I wanted to highlight were already uh, being addressed. In some areas, in some schools, they are still in the Northern Cape, we are still in Pixley, we are still experienced schools with pit toilets. And it can be, as the others are saying, if there is a shortage of water, the one that is taking the blood is the women. Now with the pit toilets also, it is the women that are there. It's very, very unacceptable by now that you can have pit toilets in our country, more especially in the province. But we hope that when we address some of this, we'll reflect in our in, in the in the this charter so that we can know. What is it all about? And the other, the last point, ma'am. The if the SKA can also assist, because I know the guest houses are not that much. If they can assist just for with the center for all these children and women abuse, so that we know at least their legacy is there. We've got a center that is can be used in future. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time. Thank you, Babetla. Eva, we are going to allow you because after you, we will, we will give to Tate Mutsamai to do the vote of things. Eva. Chair. Chair. Oh, Chair. I, yes, only, only one you. word, Chair, please. You yes. may, because we said we will come back to you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Can, can, can I take the platform, Chair? You have taken it, you have taken it, you have grabbed it, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, my chair. Uh, only one point on equality. Ma'am, if you can check, even in the parliament there, the senior position are being taken by men. Even the deputy is the man. Can the, 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 the department check on that one so that the females also have the senior position? If the, the manager is the, is, is, the fem, is the male and the deputy must be a male, can't wait to work like that, please. Okay, Sister Njue, Eva Tuma, Tume, Eva. Where is the Frau Van Priska now? Can I go eat the Frau? No, I can't hear you, but I'm going to say it. As of now, Eva. No, I'm not going to say it. I'm 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 going to say it. Can you hear me? Hello. What's the word you have? Pony, get Duni out of there. Yes. Is there a problem? Eva? What's the Duni? Yeah, can you hear me? Now, come, you know, Vicky Bay. Serious? Yes, now, we hear you now. Okay. Am I on? Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Chair, for the opportunity. I won't be very long. I just felt that it uh, 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 that I must uh, uh, um, put um, also my 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 penny in. Um, my input will be uh, on. Uh, Back to your video of of mode of view. Okay. Let us please, my best class. Don't fail, please. Okay. I'm Continue, done. Eva. Okay. Mm. Eva. Hello. As you are. Okay, it seems as if she's, we lost her. Okay. Uh, she's going to have opportunity. I hope you have all this wonderful. Chair? If, if Ms. Tumex is not there anymore, we will, Connie, you are not saying something. I wrong. am here. Okay, so let's hear you. We okay, don't hear like you. I said, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. My yes. input is that. We, we can have all these wonderful policies and points in this woman charter chair. But for me, staying in a rural area, uh, uh, we are not the recipients and the benefits of, of, of this. I agree with one of the previous speakers uh, that, uh, that says that the charter must really look at rural areas and how they can, can empower and uplift women. Because, chair, you st still find it in this age of, of day that we don't have any kind of high schools. 
we only go from grade one until grade 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 nine, and uh, 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 work opportunities is so is so much uh, uh, scarce in the group that when 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 children have to go to high schools, in this age of time, that when it comes to choose, parents would rather choose the boys to attend high school and leave the the, the girls at, at at home. So for me is that in order for all of this to work and, 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 and actually uh, uh, um, benefiting us, I do think that the charters will speak to rural areas, helping up uplifting and empowering young girls and women. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Eva. Siskone, uh, can, can you do the vote of things, ne? You make a small input and do the vote of things. Oh, okay, Chairperson, I thank you for the opportunity to be part of this meeting here. I just wanted to request from your high office that as you gave uh, presentations, must please make their inputs available so that uh, everybody has got a second chance to uh, to look at them. But since now I'm asked to, to, to give a vote of thanks, I would like to thank you first and foremost for this um, platform you have given women of the Northern Cape in, Cape in particular, especially <coughs> you know that poverty in those areas, including um, unemployment, it's very, very, very serious. So you are giving the women of the province an opportunity to be heard because and also to give information about developments or the achievements so far. We all know that the face of poverty is a woman. A woman. That includes water, sanitation. It's true that at this age, there's no way that we can still be having bucket systems. There's no way that we can still have pit toilets. So this is an opportunity for us to raise it with the NCOP, a very relevant uh, house in our, in our country, which will be able, which has got an interest of provinces at heart. So Madam Chairperson, thank you so much. And thank you to also give us as members of parliament to listen to the needs of women. And this is really empowering. SKA, thank you for your participation as well. We also appreciate the statistics which we received so that it will be able to make us work better and plan better as parliament, as people of South Africa, as the NCOP. So thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. Thank you for giving me the honor to give you a vote of thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sis Connie. I, I have to give you the honor. You know, you remain my senior, although I'm in a more senior position in Parliament, but you remain my senior. And I, I really appreciate that the fact that you also attended the session. But I want to also thank Ms. Maraj and Nomonde, but really the women of Peaks Lika Seme for taking this very serious because that is exactly what we want. If we don't take ourselves serious, who is going to take us serious? So with that, I want to thank all of you and the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Vedla. Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank you,